Why is it important to niche down? If you are a fisherman and you are going out to sea, I can't continue with fisherman, it's gonna be fisherman. Um, if you're a fisherman and you're going out to sea to, co to catch a certain fish, and sorry to the fishermen out there, I'm not a fisherman, but if you're going out to catch a certain fish, yeah, you're probably gonna use a rod because that is specific, you're gonna have the right bait on the rod, it's gonna lure and attract the fish that you want to attract, which will then allow you to catch that fish, right? So you are going out with a specific goal to catch a specific fish, but if you haven't got a niche, you're effectively going out with a fishing net, and in the net, you're gonna catch all sorts of fish, fish that are useless to you, fish that are pointless. You're gonna catch rubbish, you're probably gonna get a load of plastic because there's no plastic in straws no more, which is good. Um, you're gonna get all of this shit in your net, shit that you don't want, which ultimately you're gonna to have to throw back because it is pointless and it doesn't take you towards your goal. In fact, you're gonna waste a lot of time getting rid of the shit from that net that you don't want rather than just serving the rod that you do want. So that is an analogy I love why you niche down. You wanna go fishing with a rod rather than a fishing net. And when you're looking at your niche and where you should niche down, the easiest niche for you is going to be, without a doubt, the niche that you come from. For example, myself. My niche, the people that I help, are people that are not in the best mental spots. Let's put it that way. They don't have to be at a point where they wanted to commit suicide like myself. However, I know the journey of coming back from being the lowest I've ever felt and how I put the steps in place to get away from that. So my niche is helping people that are not necessarily struggling with their mental health, but they are feeling a bit shit about themselves and I drag them from that place because I have been and walked in their shoes before. So therefore, it makes it very easy for me to see where they are in that journey, what I need to do to take them from where they are in pain right now to where they want to be, which is you've got a problem there, you've got solution. So the easiest way to find problem and solution for you is what shoes have you walked in? Are you the skinny kid that has packed on 20 kilos of muscle and now you feel fucking fantastic? Did you go from obese or larger than life and now you've lost loads of weight and that is where you are? How old are the people that you're gonna be serving? Are they gonna be people that are I don't know, in your age group, when you was doing that, or that doesn't need mean to say, there's certain niches which might inspire you. I came across a niche, niche the other day, which was a girl, she was um, niching down for autistic kids. And I thought that was, or sorry, autistic adults. And I thought that was a phenomenal niche, something that I'd not come across before. Another niche that I found the other day was a bloke was helping uh, people inside of his religion that might feel uncomfortable inside of a gym, gain their confidence to then train in a normal gym. And I thought, again, that is a story that really touched me. And I think that's a fantastic niche because if I was part of that religion, yeah, I'm gonna flock to that because I'm gonna associate, ah, oh, these are people with my pain points. I'm not saying it's a pain point to be part of that religion, but from the research that he had done, he had found that a lot of people within his religion had the same beliefs in the fact that they was felt uh, very unconfident and very, as if they were judged to go to a gym. Whereas this was now a community that he had built and a niche of people that he had built, which is allowing them to overcome those mental blocks, which will get in the way of training. So when you come to finding your niche, it is so important. You're not looking to get any Tom, Dick and Harry onto your program because if you continue to do that, 
They are going to be the shit clients. They are going to be the clients that drain your business, that drain your attention. They're the clients where you might be having 20, 25, 30 clients saying, you're the best coach in the world. But then you've got these free fuckers that sap your energy. They drain it. They make you question whether or not you are a good coach. And the reason for that is we're always going to identify and, well, not identify, but we're always going to look to overcome a negative opinion rather than enjoy a positive one. So if you're casting this net far and wide and you're taking any sort of client and then you're trying to make a program for these clients specifically and they're saying this doesn't work and blah, 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 that is just gonna take away from your energy. So you might be thinking, oh yeah, I'm not niching down because there's gonna be so many more people not in my niche. No, when you niche down, you talk to the people that are in your niche. You talk to the people that need your help. And in every single bit of content, that will go to your niche. They will connect with it, which will then draw the people that are in your tribe to you and cast everyone that isn't away. And that is not a bad thing because ultimately, you only wanna help the people that connect with you. That's not saying everyone else can get fucked, because there's gonna be a coach for them. But in your niche, the tribe that you build is what is going to then become so much more profitable for you. So do not think fisherman with a net, think fisherman with a rod, fisher man. If you found this useful, please, please do like and subscribe because yeah, I wanna help millions of people and this is a great way to do it. So thanks for listening. Um, just remember, fishing rod, not fishing net.